I'm Ariane from STEMformatics. Um, so we're over at the University of Melbourne, but also up at the AIBN at the University of Queensland. And I'm an undergraduate student in electrical and computer engineering. So apologies to any biologists if I make mistakes on that front. So today I'll be talking about merging biological data types, types to create integrated visualizations. <clears throat> so what this project really is, is Bioplatforms Australia came to STEMformatics and asked us to do some of their visualizations. So what STEMformatics does is we create nice online easy visualizations for stem cell biologists. And so what we mainly deal with is gene data and protein data. So Bioplatforms Australia actually also asked us to deal a bit with metabolic data. So this is quite a new field. Um, for an example, the first metabolic database I think was curated in 2005. So it's a lot more recent than gene data, basically. So we had to have a bit of a survey of what was around there and figure out what we wanted to create. So what we wanted to create was putting the expression data from our researchers, so um, expression data of metabolites, onto a pathway. So a pathway is um, a network basically defining the relations between these metabolites. So how one chemical transitions to another from a particular reaction within the body or within the cell. And add this um, also with statistical values. So what is the significance of what we're seeing? And is this expression value important to me? So we had a look at what was around to see if this suited our users. So our users, I think I mentioned, are biologists primarily, so stem cell biologists. And as they don't have too much background in metabolomics, they wanted something which was a bit easier to use, so friendly, so not too comprehensive and not overcomplicated, so that your signal still stands out. So the available tools, um, I've only picked two because that's easy for me, um, were Reactome and Biopsych, they're two of the most popular ones. And so the primary issues with these ones when I was trying to use them was that they were pretty slow and quite complicated. So for someone starting out with Metablox, it probably wasn't ideal. So speed, um, also I'm only serving online tools because we want things to be collaborative. We want things to be able to be used online between research groups around the world. So an issue with speed, as everyone knows, when you're doing data visualizations is transferring data. So how do we transfer a lot of information over the web and get it to be quick. So we want to transfer data with less calls, because each call to the database is going to take time. There's going to be latency. We want to reduce those pathway structures. So in the um, tool, I guess, so when you're doing metabolic visualization, the biggest thing you're going to deal with is the network. So it's that big information blob which says, this reaction goes to this one. And we also want to separate the visualization and the upload process so that people don't have to re-upload the same data set, don't have to do calls back to the database for the same piece of information, because we've already got that there. So I've just put some examples of fun loading times from some other tools. Complexity. So the current tools are pretty complicated, but that's because they're for their target audience, so I'm not knocking that at all. So they're generally made for bioinformaticians, where it's really important to have like depth of information. They like the complex whereas biologists don't like the complex as much. They kind of want to know from the get-go, where am I going? Where am I going to target my research further? So this is kind of the feedback that we got from the researchers who are going to be using the tool prior to the development. So we got a bunch of tools. We gave them the options. So we had to choose a pathway. And so we were like, OK, which pathway do you like? Which one suits you best? Which one gives you the most intuitive response to where you're going? So it's kind of like a map. When you're choosing a map, you're not going to go to the terrain version of Google Earth, because it's kind of really hard to look at that. You're going to go for the abstracted view of lines on a page, which you know are roads. So our end users chose Azure Pathways. So that's an example. And it's quite simple. It's elegant. And it's a nice data structure in JSON format. So there's all these other types of formats, like SMBL, Systems Biology Markup Language, which can be, provide even bigger overheads when you're transferring the data. So our solution to this was to produce a new tool called Omics View. So the main things were improving the speed and reducing the complexity. And I'll talk about how the data types we used produced this. So data, and data transparency and detail. So something which is really important is being able to provide a lot of information as an overlay, so as a, I guess, far out view, so the one from before, but then also allowing people to go into the detail and being able to analyze the expression values of a particular metabolite further. So for example, from that big graph I showed earlier, 
people can immediately see, okay, this region, my data set is highly expressed in. I'm going to go look there further. I'm going to go look at my favorite metabolite and see how this one is actually expressed. What is the difference? So we also provide data transparency. So this is to do with mapping. So when you're mapping between metabolites, it can get a bit hairy, and I'll go into that in the challenges. But basically, we provide everything in a really transparent manner, so you can just click on it and access it. And I think a couple of people today have mentioned layering. So when you're layering that information, you really want to be able to abstract out the, inf the important things, and you want to be able to zoom and filter. So this is where we integrated the statistical tests. So traditionally, you overlay your um, expression values onto a pathway. That gives you an indication of um, what you've seen in your experiment and where it affects. But by adding in the statistical tests, it gives you an idea, so pre-processed statistical values, I should note. So someone inputs p-value, et cetera. But by giving them the ability to filter on, say, what's significant, they can actually get rid of all that background noise, which is such a challenge in biology, because we always are picking up signals which we don't want, rather than just targeting the signal of interest. So that was a really important thing, being able to filter on those values. So the challenges that we faced. So the biggest challenges was being able to connect the pathway node to the experimental data. So I had to, in the end, go from four databases and go between the two, between all four. So basically, a bit of background. When you're just going to a database and you search for one term, and then you want to go to that in another database. So generally, you just go between the two, and you'd expect to end up back at the start. Well, often in biology, sometimes things change, and a link is dead, and you end up nowhere in particular. Or sometimes things reference a completely different metabolite to the one you started off with. So what we needed to do, we needed to make a thing which was reproducible, so we could definitively say, yes, your experimental data does map to this point on this pathway because that's a pretty important thing, I think, in any sort of data visualization. It's the integrity of the data that you're showing. So what we did, we took these four databases, and we found the longest string possible to uniquely identify a metabolite, and that ended up being an inchy string. So it's kind of this big, long string that represents the um, chemical structure of a metabolite. And because it's really long, it's really unique. And that gave us a way to consolidate the identifiers between these four databases and end up with two nice, really small tables, which allowed us to merge our expression data, our pathways, and our statistical lists. So another challenge is user feedback. And everyone agrees that when you're polishing stuff up, that takes the longest. So making something nice compared to making something functional is a really big difference. And no one really allocates funding on being like, yo, I want to make this tool nice. People are like, you got a tool, just use it, right? So, yeah, but then again, we found that although it had all this functionality, people weren't able to use it because they couldn't find it, because it was difficult, because if people don't get it immediately in a couple of clicks these days, they're like, oh, I'm done, cool, give me the next tool, or I can't find it, I'm too lazy. Um, so what we needed was a lot of user feedback, which should have been a lot more iterative. So this, we had a bit of com um, troubles with that because I actually did this for my undergrad thesis project, so it was done in about three months which meant that there wasn't time, much time for toing and froing. So we mainly went from feedback at the start to feedback at the end, which we're receiving now. So I'd like to thank Metabolomics Australia for all the awesome feedback, actually. So some of the things which you get from feedback from users, which you wouldn't notice yourself, for example, for me as an engineer, I think having the scales consistent across the visualization is really important, because that gives you a way to comparatively analyze the metabolites for me. Uh, but for Metabolomics people, they were like, nah, why would you have the scale consistent? We like to see what's going on in the metabolite of interest. We want to see how those two things, so the two particular samples, how they are different compared to each other, not compared to the other metabolites within the data set. So it actually became an important option to provide options for each of these that people could easily click between. So in the future, what we'd really like to do is we'd like to integrate not only the expression values and the pathways and the statistical lists, we want to integrate gene data and protein data. So what that would mean would be consolidating some more identifiers, which is always really fun. And this sort of thing hasn't been, well, it's really difficult. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Feel free to ask any questions. <laughs> but 
basically by adding in the gene information, you're kind of adding in the rules of what things are happening. By adding in the protein information, you're kind of adding in these are the things which make it happen. And by adding in the metabolite information, you're adding in the snapshot of a particular point in time of your system. So when people integrate all these different data types, they get a really good idea, well, a goodish idea of what's going on in the cell at a particular point in time. And that gives them an indication of maybe why one group has a disease and why one group doesn't. That gives them an indication of perhaps we can use this drug to target this particular area on your metabolism cycle, and maybe this will solve it. So that's what we're really aiming to do in the future. And so I'd like to acknowledge um, everyone on these slides, and in particular Roland for all his help. Thank you. Oh, yeah, questions? Thank you. Now I've got a question. Oh. Um, with the uh, user feedback, have you had conflicting user feedback from different populations of users? So we have. So thank you for that wonderful question, Roland. Um, it, it's been really important to keep in mind who the audience is, who the, our target is, because you don't want to reinvent something where people already have a tool for their group. So we do get different feedback from the bioinformaticians versus from the biologists. And I mean, you kind of want everyone to be able to use it, but sometimes that's not realistic and you need to choose one audience. So we've targeted it towards the biologists who do give different feedback of saying, look, I'm not particularly interested in a metabolite, um, like in one particular metabolite. I don't have a favorite metabolite. Like people have their favorite genes, right? <laughs> people don't have their favorite metabolites. I don't know, something like that. So they like to see the overview and that's really the important thing and then being able to go in. Concentration of particular metabolite will depend on a lot of other metabolites. Yeah. Any way to visualize that, how the concentrations of the, or the whatever, um, uh, depend on, on the activity of genes or, or the concentrations of other metabolites? So what you can do is, uh, this is a kind of a uh, bit of a filtered version. So you can filter it on the different values that you upload, so your BH adjusted value, your p-value, and that sort of thing. You also have the ability to filter on the difference between the metabolites if you upload that as a particular information content. And that would be able to give you a way to highlight, so say in pink or blue or green, something within your data set. So it's a pretty modular process. Also, I should note this is still beta, 